Hi guys, welcome to this set of videos. What we're gonna do here in this set of videos is we're actually gonna start a new chapter. Uh, and actually this chapter and the next chapters to follow are going to be all about circles. Now, um, these two, uh, well these two chapters, these chapters that follow here dealing with circles and the geometry of circles actually is going to be one of the more heavily tested parts of geometry on standardized tests like the SAT and the ACT. You will see quite a bit of the stuff we're about to go over here as far as arcs of circles, inscribed angles, central angles, and things like that show up maybe more than anything else in geometry on those standardized tests. So over the next couple of chapters, you wanna make sure you pay close attention uh, and really sort of internalize this information because you will see it again um, in your junior year um, when you take those standardized tests. So let's jump right into this. The way we're gonna start off this particular section on circles is we wanna know how we can determine some really, really basic stuff when it comes to finding the measure of central angles and inscribed angles. We'll talk about what they are and how you go about finding them, all right? Now, the way that we're gonna do that, of course, is our objectives or learning targets. These are the things we're gonna need to be able to do, the things that we're gonna talk about to help us answer this essential question. So the first thing we'll do is you guys will need to understand how to identify central and inscribed angles. And then, as we always do, once you know the geometry, then we're gonna do some algebra, right? We're gonna take that little bit of geometry, what's a central angle, what's an inscribed angle, what's an arc, and use it to do some algebra, all right? So let's just jump right into this. Here's the way that these are going to go. As we are starting this new chapter here in geometry, Geometry, mathematics in general, but especially geometry, it is a language. You need to know how to speak the language. And of course, in order to speak a language, you gotta know the vocabulary, okay? There is, uh, there's really no shortcut here, all right? It takes time, it takes practice to get good at speaking geometry. But in order for you and I to communicate, you must be able to understand what I'm saying, and that requires you to know the vocabulary. So, whether you make flashcards, or you use Quizlet, or whatever it is, whatever way you find best to memorize vocabulary, terms, and definitions, you need to do that. We're gonna learn a lot of new terms here, terms you probably haven't heard before and you must know what they mean. I am going to use them over and over and over again, even in the directions, right? When I tell you to find the measure of the central angle, if you don't know what a central angle is, you don't, I mean, what are you, what are you gonna do, right? You can't answer the question. So it's really important that you're able to speak the language of mathematics, in this case, geometry. So let's get those terms and definitions. First one, Chord. All right, it's real simple. A chord is simply a line segment. The reason we don't call it a line segment is because we're dealing with circles. And the way that a chord works is a chord is going to be a line segment whose endpoints lie on the circle. I have two chords for you down here so that you can see an example of them. I have this chord right here. This chord is AB or BA. Notice that the endpoints of that chord lie on the circle, right? So that is a chord A, B, or B, A. I have another chord for you right here. This one, this is B, D, or D, B. Again, the order of the endpoints doesn't matter. So those are both chords. Now, real quick, it is worth pointing out, please notice there are two other line segments in here. There's the line segment C, A, and C, D. Those are not chords. Why are they not chords? Well, real important, the definition. Definition, the endpoints lie on the circle. Please notice that point C is the center of the circle, but point C does not lie on the circle, which means C, A, and C, D are not chords. B, A, and B, D are chords. Really, really important. Make sure that you keep those straight. Then we have a central angle. Now, the central angle, is going to be an angle with a measure that is less than or equal to 180 degrees. 
the vertex of the angle makes perfect sense. It's a central angle. So the vertex of the angle is the center of the circle. I have a central angle for you right here. There he is. Hang on. Oh, sorry. That's my highlighter. I don't want my highlighter. I want my green pen. That guy. Right there, there's my central angle. You could call it angle C. You could call it angle A, C, D. You could call it angle D, C, A, whatever. They all mean the exact same thing, central angle. Why? Because the vertex is at the center of the circle. Same thing over here. There's my central angle. Oh, and by the way, please notice that, right, I've got A, C, chord. Nope, I apologize, not that one. That's my central angle. Hold up right here, B A chord, B D also a chord, right? The end points are on the circle. And then the last one I got here for you next term is an inscribed angle. Uh, this is simply going to be an angle whose vertex lies on the circle. Its sides are chords, right? So the sides of the angle are going to be chords uh, and it lies, the vertex lies on a circle uh, and you can see that guy right here. There he is, there's angle, that angle B or you could call it angle A, B, D or D, B, A, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that is an inscribed angle. Why? Because the vertex lies on the circle, point B is on the circle and the sides of the angle are chords. Same thing over here. Angle B is an inscribed angle. So it's really important that you keep these straight, know when a line is a chord and when it is not, and then be able to tell the difference between a central angle and an inscribed angle. There's really nothing else I can do for you here. It's now up to you to make sure you know these terms and their definitions, and then that you're able to recognize them in a diagram. I've got more terms and definitions for you. I wish that was it, but it is not. What we're now going to do is we need to talk about arcs. When it comes to circles, what we're going to deal with quite a bit is an arc. And an arc is simply going to be a portion of the circle, right? So it is a continuous portion of the circle consisting, right, of two points that are going to be the end points of the arc, end points of the arc, and then all the points in between. Really, really not too tricky. I have several examples of arcs for you right here. So the first one, right, we're going to have a minor arc. This minor arc is going to be this guy right here, this little arc right there, arc AB. All right, some notation stuff for you, okay? When it comes to arcs, arcs will be measured in degrees. So just for example, let's say that the measure of arc AB, and uh, here, sorry, the way that we, not uh, the notation for this, the way that you tell me, or I know it's an arc, they actually put it right here. You'll just put that little arc over top of it so that I know you're talking about an arc. And arcs are measured in degrees. In fact, I, I, we're just making up a number here, but I don't know, let's say that that's uh, 40 degrees. Right? So they are going to be measured in degrees, just like angles are measured in degrees, arcs are also measured in degrees. Um, the notation you can see here, you're just going to take the end points of the arc like you would a line segment, but instead of putting a line over top of it so we know it's a line segment, you'll put that little arc over it so that we know you're talking about an arc. Now, what makes it a minor arc? Well, what makes it a minor arc is that the measure of AB is going to be less than 180 degrees, all right? So if you have an arc that's less than 180 degrees, it's what we call a minor arc. Okay, great, the next one then is going to be a major arc. A major arc, what is the difference between these two? Really, really simple, the difference is simply this. A major arc, in this case it is A, D, B. Sorry, hold up, that's a terrible D. Once again, the way that I know it's an arc is by the arc notation. And in this case, right, a major arc is going to be greater than 180 degrees. So that's really not that big a deal. And in fact, it makes perfect sense. If I take a circle and I create a minor arc, 
right? If I have a minor arc, an arc less than 180 degrees, then the rest of the circle is going to be a major arc, right? More than 180 degrees. Also, notation-wise, really, really important um, to distinguish between the minor arc, AB, and the major arc, this guy, right? I can't also call it arc AB, because then how do I tell the difference between these two? So what we're going to do for the major arcs, add a third point. Add a third point, which they've done right here, D, and you'll simply write it arc A, D, B. The end points are on the ends, just like they are um, when writing a line segment or the measure of an angle or something like that. The end points are on the end, and then that point that lies in that major arc, point D, goes there in the middle. Again, the point is this, major arcs are greater than 180 degrees. So this is my major arc right there. Okay, so then the last one, of course, is going to be if I have an arc that's less than 180, I have an arc that's greater than 180, what if it is equal to 180 degrees? Well, no big deal. Here's what we've got. I have the measure of arc AB is equal to 180 degrees, or the measure of arc ADB is also equal to 180 degrees. This is what we call a semicircle, right? Semi means half, it's half a circle. Since a circle is 360 degrees, half a circle would be 180 degrees. So here's my two arcs, my Arc AB is this guy right here. He is 180 degrees. It is a semicircle. My other arc ADB is right over there, also 180 degrees. And in this case, both the major and minor arcs have the exact same value. They're both 180 degrees and semicircles. So again, really what the takeaway from this is simply this. Arcs are measured in degrees, right? We're gonna measure arcs in degrees just like you measure an angle. And then is it a minor? arc, a major arc, make sure you use the appropriate notation. You'll let me know it's an arc by putting that little arc over it. Uh, and we'll, we'll go from there with arcs. Now, there is a theorem when it comes to arcs. We've seen these before. Hopefully you'll remember from all the way back at the beginning of the geometry in chapter one, a couple of the first things we looked at were the segment. I'm sorry, segment. Sorry, hang on. Sorry, no, 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 that, yep, correct. The segment, I was erase and put line, but it's not. It's segment, addition, postulate. Also, there in chapter one, we looked at the segment, addition, postulate, which just simply says, if you sum together a um, adjacent segments, so segments that line up with each other, you get the entire length of the line segment, so the segment addition postulate. Uh, it looked like this. Here, let me erase this guy. Erase this guy. It, it Just as an example, if I gave you this here, and I told you that, um, oh, I don't know, let's say this guy was 12, and this guy was equal to four, and I asked you to find this length right here. Right, you guys remember this from chapter one. How do I find the entire length? We simply sum together the two line segments that make it up, 12 plus four, 16, so x is equal to 16, right? That's the segment addition postulate. We also learned the angle addition postulate, again, all the way back in chapter one, which is the exact same idea, just now dealing with angles. You can sum adjacent angles to find the overall angle measure. If I have an angle and that angle consists of several other angles in it, Right, what I could do is sum together, right, the two smaller angles if I know their measures to find the measure of the larger angle. Okay, 
Segment Edition Postulate, Angle Edition Postulate, check it out, the Arc Edition Postulate. Really, really a simple idea. If I am trying to find the measure of arc A, D, B, A, D, B, I can simply sum together A, D plus D, B, and if I add those guys together, guess what I get? I get the entire measure of arc ADB. All right, it's really, really a simple idea. I give you the measure of two smaller mark arcs. If they're right next to each other, add them together to find the greater arc. What we're gonna do now that we know some vocabulary and we've learned a couple of postulates here, we'll jump into example problems on the next page of the notes. I'll meet you guys there.